He's talking about the need to honour one another and to honour the gifts that God has put in each life. And I just want to finish that sort of two-week teaching on honour because where there's honour, there's life. And we don't come from a culture of honour in terms of most cultures, particularly Western cultures, are sort of pretty individualistic. It's all about me getting to the top and if I have to tread over a few people, too bad. Some cultures are really good at honour. They honour their elderly and they honour, you know, the next generation and so on, but we, we haven't inherited a lot of that. We sort of fight for our own rights. But God is, I believe, speaking to us and saying that we need to learn to honour because honour is the power that releases life. And one of the first commands, if you honour father and mother, it'll go well with you and you'll have a long life. And a lot of people go, ouch, I find it hard to honour, particularly sometimes mums and dads, because things went wrong. Well, let me say again, you do, don't honour the dishonour, you don't honour the things that were wrong, you honour the fact that God actually intended that a mother and father would have a really good effect and a good role and be great parents. You honour God's intention, you honour the good things that did happen. don't have to honour dishonour. There's some people go, oh, I can't honour. Well, there'll be something there you can honour and be thankful for. But it goes beyond that. It talks about honouring each other's gifts. And uh, we're told that if we will, for example, receive a prophet, you'll get a prophet's reward. And the way that you receive one another's gifting is to honour each other. And we honour that not only do I know you as a person, you have divine nature in your being. God has come and he lives within you and that's the part that I honour because I want to receive something from you. And it comes through the gifting that's upon your life and we call them the mantle that's upon your life. The word mantle is that like an outer cloak. You see pictures of mantles, they're sleeveless and they come upon the shoulder and they, they wrap around you, they cover you. A mantle is like a spiritual covering. Number one, we're anointed on the inside, Christ in us. But then Luke 4.18 says, The Spirit of the Lord is also upon me. And we are clothed with power. Very few people understand that. So they, there is Christ in them and people are thankful that they're Christians. But we are not only Christ in us, we have an anointing upon our lives to do the works of Jesus. Luke 4.18 says, The Spirit of the Lord is upon me because he's anointed me to do a number of things. Just call out what those things are in Luke 4.18. little test. Nice and loud. The Spirit of the Lord's upon me too. Keep speaking it out. He's anointed me to preach the gospel to the poor. Sent me to heal the broken hearted, to preach deliverance to the captives, recovery of sight to the blind to set liberty those who are bruised and to preach the acceptable year of the Lord or the year when everything's restored and returns to you, everything that's been stolen is brought back and given to you that's the anointing upon your life the anointing within you, 1 John 2 20, you have an anointing within you, that's for you we've said this a few times so you'll get it, the anointing within you is for you it's to develop character, it's to be led into all truth. You read and from the inside the Holy Spirit teaches you and guides you and strengthens you and leads you. So the anointing within you is for you. But the anointing upon you is for other people. The anointing on you is for something and for someone. That's why when the body of Christ is encouraged to know, number one, who they are, number two, the gifting and the calling that they have, and they are encouraged to gain experience, you start to give what you've got. The mantle is already upon you. It, it's going to increase because God gives more and more and more. Sometimes the mantles change in the sense God gives different mantles, different anointings. But it's a word that's used in, um, in science where the, the core of the planet, the, for example, the core of the earth, is surrounded by a mantle and it's called a mantle. And that mantle protects the very core. It surrounds the core of the earth. The mantle that's upon your life protects you. It 
protects the gifting. It protects your being. It's, a, it's divine. It's powerful. Uh, Acts one eight says, don't go and do anything till you're endued with the power from on high. The power that comes. Now you and I are not powerful, but we carry the power of God. God is the powerful one. In reality, in fact, ourselves, we're weak, but he's strong in us. So we still are powerful, but it's his power. Otherwise, people start to boast about, oh, I'm so powerful. No, in fact, you're weak, but his power rests upon you. And his, his gentleness makes you great. You're not great. No offence. You know, we're, we're the weaker one, but he comes with strength and power and glory. He says, I give myself to you. It's awesome. It's incredible. And that, that anointing, that endurement, and the word in, in, endure with power is to have like, is, the definition is to have like a second skin. Uh, a confirmation. A second skin. And to have... To have your skin, I mean the skin itself is absolutely seamless and it totally covers every area of your being, physical being. So when the power comes, imagine it like a second skin. You're, you're clothed with it. You're clothed with it. It's like the new you. I've got Christ on the inside and I've got power all over me. It's the, it's the new you. That's why our confession... To, has to change about, oh, I'm useless and I'm weak and I've had a bad past. Well, that all may be true. I'm a new creature. Greater is he who's in me. I can do all things through Christ. I'm forgiven. I'm strong in the Lord and the power of his... And you begin to speak your own destiny. Hallelujah. Glory to God. You and I are to speak our own destiny or we speak our own fall. Because I've said it before, the one who says I can do it and the one who says I can't do it are both right. Some can, some can't. The one who says, well, I'm going to be a success, the one who says, I think I'll fail, you're both right. The one who says it's going to go well with me and the other one says, I think there's loom and disaster. You're both right. Because you create it. There's an enemy who confirms the negative and there's a God who confirms the truth. When I learned this, I jumped into God's side and said, I'm hanging out here. And sometimes you, you get your confession wrong and your belief system gets a bit wonky. You've got to come back to the Word of God again. Come back to the cross of Christ again. And begin to believe again. We are believers. We're not unbelieving believers. We are believing believers. And uh, I say it for your, your benefit. I say it for my benefit. And uh, the anointing upon you is powerful. And if you receive a prophet, you get the prophet's reward. Well, what's the prophet's reward? You get the prophecy, you get the prophetic anointing, you get the word of God and you're blessed. Well, someone has a healing anointing. If you receive that person, have a guess what you get? Healing. I feel better now. How come? I received healing. Chronicle says, don't touch my anointed one. Sometimes you've heard that being preached and it's, it used to always be preached from the leaders. Don't touch the anointed one because that's me. Don't cause me any harm. Don't touch God's anointed, it's me. Do as I tell you. That is not what that scripture means. The scripture means this. The whole body is anointed. Therefore don't harm anybody by being disrespectful to their anointing. It says don't cause the prophets any harm. Well how could you harm a prophet? The worst thing you can do is call them a false prophet because that's a disrespect. I mean, if they are false, call them false. But if they're true prophets, if they're genuine prophets, then we need to honour the gift and you'll get the reward. So someone might say, look, I don't know about all these, these big ministries, these government ministries, apostle, prophet, evangelist, pastor, teacher, but every now and again I get a little word of knowledge. What an awesome start. Because if someone receives the word of knowledge you've got, they can receive the divine life that that word holds and they can get totally blessed by that word. Totally blessed. Remember a few months ago one of the brothers was hugging the pole, if you remember, years ago, and the Lord says, it wasn't your fault. You were betrayed. 
You were set up for failure. It wasn't your fault. One word of knowledge and that guy's face lit up. It might be here. I'm not sure. Sorry, it's so dark I can't tell. Who? Was that you? Promoted to the front row. Hallelujah. Uh, Right. Where's that mic? How did you get from hugging the pole to the front row? (laughs) What's happened? What's happened to you? Um, Share a bit of your testimony. Um, Well, I mean, from that night when you were uh, looking at me uh, like, you you know, you wanted to give me five for what? That was was the first week I got into Shalom. Yeah. Yeah. I just give my heart to the Lord. And um, so much of that for me, like it's amazing, everything, <laughs> everything. Uh, but uh, I've got no idea, like just from with my kids to my health. You know, I've got an illness and I, I reckon it's gone now. I find, I'm going to see the neurologist at um, Royal Perth yeah. in, in August and I, I reckon it's gone. Yeah, of course, absolutely. That's just the start there. But, absolutely. Um, basically like... Um, I used to be really bad into drugs and all that, like alcohol and drugs, and it just caused havoc everywhere I went. Yeah. But now, like, um, I feel I've changed as a person. Like, I think I'm a really nice person. Now. <laughs> <laughs> and um, yeah, thank you. you. Are. Um, yeah, I just like I, I just feel the Lord in my life. Like every day, awesome, I just awesome, wake up awesome. out of bed every day. I just like I get up probably five minutes. I've just got a big like I feel like I've got a big smile on my face. I, I want to go for a walk. I just want to do things. Awesome. Yeah. Fantastic. Yeah. So that's, that's going well for you. Yeah. Awesome. 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 One word of knowledge. That's, that's how it started, like one word of knowledge. You, you, the, the thoughts bubble up. You know, the gifts of the Spirit, they, they, they bubble up. Like when God speaks to you, usually it's not fluorescent lights, it's not writing on the wall, it's not it's not this weird, wonderful... It's just like the thoughts bubble up. That's called the still, small voice of God. And it, it intercepts your natural thinking. That's why you sort of say, I don't think that was me. Where'd that come from? That's left field thinking. I mean, so, you know, with, without spending all night talking about him, you are, you are special and fantastic. But for a man up the back, sort of, you know, unsure of us, fair enough, first time here, I've been here a few times, I'm still unsure of us. <laughs> and he's peeking around the pole there. And the Lord says, with one word, you are betrayed. One word of knowledge. All of us can have that. The thoughts bubble up. The thoughts bubble up. Confidence means, I'm going to learn how to speak this out. It doesn't have to start in front of a few hundred. It starts with, you know, one or two. Little house group, or your friends, or your your neighbour or your cat. You, you start to release it, someone confirms it and your faith goes, Shh. that's word of knowledge, word of wisdom, particularly pertaining to things that God is showing even for future. How to, how to step into what God has. Discerning of spirits is very powerful because you, there are different kinds of spirits that hang around people. You've got The Spirit of God on believers, you've got demon powers that are on most people, except now that we're believers, we're saying keep away from us, we belong to Christ. You've got the human spirit, so that before we were Christians, we still had spiritual thoughts and feelings and attitudes from the human spirit. So you've got the Holy Spirit, you've got demonic spirit, you've got just the human, the person. You've got to discern what's happening. Can you imagine sort of going into a business deal and this one's sort of speaking and talking and all this stuff. You've got to discern, is this right? Is this God? Is this some trap? Discernment of spirit, discerning of spirits. It's a gift. Many of you will have it. You say, oh, I just don't feel right. It doesn't feel good. The red light goes on. Gifts of healings. Fantastic. Many of you will have it because these kind of meetings, it's like a dominant anointing that sits over these meetings and you just, you just grab it. I guarantee many, if not most of you, would heal the sick. Absolutely. Number one, the Word says you will. Number two is you're in an atmosphere where you're, you're getting that anointing just dropping on you. Hallelujah. 
the working of miracles. We need people to learn how to work miracles. The Word of God is filled with evidence of a supernatural God who works miracles. The Word is filled with testimonies. The life of Jesus, an unbroken record of the miraculous. That's why a couple of billion people are following Jesus and a couple, a billion more are about to. Why? Because this is the evidence of a supernatural God. I said it maybe before, but when Jeanette and I were at a healing ministry in Africa, it wasn't our ministry, we were visitors, that had 10,000 aid patients healed, fully blown AIDS patients healed, and you couldn't say you were healed until you had medical verification. That's the power that they were moving in. I mean, incredible power. They were saying that throughout areas of Africa, the Muslim community, I'm not speaking against anybody, but the Muslim community was starting to look to the church because their God does miracles. And when the conference of some of the imams were there talking, they said, we have a problem, we're losing quite a few of our people because they're going to church. And when they discussed it, they said they're going to church because the God of the Christians is working miracles. So those in the Muslim community who needed a miracle would be going to the God who says, well, remember what God says, whosoever will, whosoever will, you're all welcome, I love you all. Even if you're not a Christian, my love's still the same for you. Calls them in, they're getting miracle signs and wonders. The Western world is a bit sceptical because the Western church has been half dead for so long. We, we need a kickstart. I mean a gentle one, but we need a kickstart. A fresh baptism of the Holy Spirit. The baptism of the Holy Spirit is meant to be an explosion of power. People treat it like, well, it's, it's like a little cherry on the cake. No, no, it's meant to be an explosion of power. That's what the Word says. It says, you shall receive power when the Holy Spirit comes upon you. You shall receive power, and that word power is dunamis. Well, have a guess what word comes out of dunamis? Dynamite. It's not talking about a weak, passive, pathetic Christian who can't do anything. This guy's got dynamite on him and in him. He blows up the work of the enemy. He destroys sickness. That anointing is restoring sight to the blind. Who are these people? Well, they're believers. They're rising up. Throughout South America where there's a massive revival, these miracles are abounding. This is history. You can do research and find out. This is history. This is not me trying to make a case so that we all believe. God's already doing it throughout Asia. Is it not true? You guys are from Malaysia. Is God moving in Malaysia? Things happening? People getting saved? Not as many as you want, but they're getting saved. And they're getting strong. This couple actually are pastors. They're very gentle and shy, so I'm just stirring them up a bit there. But is that true, though? And the people from Malaysia are basically what? The Muslims, is that the basic? And some coming to Christ? Underground, yeah, I'm sure. They do it quietly, secretly, because of the repression, yeah. People in China, massive move of God in China. Yeah. They say that there's hundreds of millions of believers in China. But most are in the underground church. Underground means that it's not seen by the world and the government and the, and the legal system. They just keep meeting. And sometimes they'll meet because it's illegal in that sense. They say, we're having a birthday party, invite a hundred friends and they all worship Jesus or not. They haven't sure. Mm -hmm. Jesus' birthday, yeah, that's right. Hallelujah. So the gifting on your life, even if you say, well, Pastor Phil, I've just started 1 Corinthians 12, 8 and 10. I just get a word of knowledge. I get a, a sense of the future. Word of, I get a discernment. Fantastic. What's happening is a mantle that's been given to you is going to get stronger and stronger and stronger and it will define your ministry because the gifts are like the foundation of your ministry. Hallelujah. Romans 12 talks about the offices or the positions in the body of Christ and it talks about again 
some of the gifts that God gives. Yeah, there, there are mantles for people who can administrate. There are mantles for people who can govern. There are mantles of people to show hospitality. You might say, I, I don't have a lot of spiritual giftings. I just love people. How awesome! Number one, you show hospitality. Number two, you could be a pastor. Because it really helps if the pastor likes the people. <laughs> and the pastors that don't like the people are hirelings. They're just in paid positions. Yeah, oh yeah, that's what the word says. It says, woe to you, you pastors, you're like hireling. You haven't got a heart for the people, you just want the people to serve you. God, God's clear about that. But for the one who says, you know, I really like people, you could have a pastoral heart, you could have a mantle that's forming on your being so you can be a pastor. So, so what, the bottom line is, honour each other because each one of us carries that part of God expressed differently. So we don't clone a copy and compete and try and all look the same. Be different. Not for the sake of rebellion, but be different because you are different. So what stops us receiving? Number one, familiarity. Oh, it's just him. I know him. I've known him for three years. It's just Bill. Well, Bill's got an anointing. John's got an anointing. Peter's got an anointing. What's their anointing? Once I recognise that I can actually have some of it. That's how, that's how you honour each other. And then you receive from that gifting. Even the youngest Christian will find that there's a gifting that starts to come because a gift doesn't require maturity. I mean, the baby was born last week and got all these gifts in the natural. You know, who is it? Princess Charlotte. She got gifts. Oh, she must have this incredible character that she deserves gifts. Yeah, so she's got no character in terms of manifesting. She's just a new baby. So I see people come into Christ, God says, here's your gift, here's your gift, here's your gift, here's your gift. And people go, oh, they can't possibly have a gift, they're so young. You know, they've got a gift. Now they're not sure how to use it, but they've got it. And we've got to train them and teach them as to, to find out who they are and how to develop the gift and how to see the gift. Sometimes if you've been a Christian for a long time, you might be offended by someone who's been saved six months and they're far and away. Yeah, no, 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 honour it. Say, God, you're accelerating things. You're speeding things up. I mean, run. As long as the Lord's leading you, run as fast as you can. And don't let people hold you back. Familiarity. And it breeds disrespect. So you've got people saying, well, I don't respect that person. Well, you know what? You've got to learn to respect them. You don't, you don't have to respect disrespectful ways that they might have but you respect the fact that you're a child of God with gifts from God and that their gifts might actually be to bless you. And Romans actually goes a step further and this will freak the whole world out. It says actually honour all men. You mean I've got to honour an enemy? Yeah. Because you've got to find something honourable about their potential and their destiny and their future even whilst they're absolute ratbags. Because whilst we were sinners, Christ died for us. Whilst we were out there doing it, he says, I'm saving, healing, delivering you. God honoured us. Can you imagine it? Whilst we were sinners, he released his love towards us. I find that mind-blowing. So when you honour all men, there's a good chance if they feel honoured, they might actually start to like you. They might want to listen to you. They might want to hang around with you. Because whenever I'm with them, they're kind, they're good. They're saying positive things, they're encouraging me, they're loving me. The religious demons will have you condemning the sinner. You wicked ratbag of a person. That does not draw anybody to God. It just confirms what they already think. Confirms that God's against them, if there's a God. He's against us. He's got a 4B2. He whacks us with the bad things. He sends sickness. He sends problems. They don't know the nature of God. But when you and I display the nature of God through gifts, you know, when you minister to someone, you're actually offering them a gift. I like getting gifts. I like getting gifts. If someone says, hey, Phil, I've got you a gift, I'm not likely to run the other way. I'm going, oh, oh, have you? 
That's awesome. A bag full of lemons. Thank you so much. How many gifts is a good thing? When the body of Christ realizes the gifting upon their life is not for them, it's for giving someone good news, it's for healing someone's sickness, it's for delivering the captive, it's for helping someone who's bruised and wounded to be restored. You reckon they're going to say no to it? I don't think so. People are desperate. Ephesians 4 talks about the governing gifts, the apostle, prophet, evangelist, pastor, teacher. If you don't, if you don't have some body somewhere pastoring you or several people sort of keeping their eye, you know, the multitude of counsellors, someone looking out for you, how can the sheep find all the green pasture? He needs a shepherd to say, hey, come this way, I found it, I've got it, here it is. Come, come follow me, I'll show you where the food is. That's what a shepherd does. People say, I don't need anyone pastoring me. I just do my own thing. Well, it's harder. Number one, you've got to go try and find your own food. Where a shepherd says, come over here, there's food. I'll make sure you get a good feed. What about an evangelist? Well, he's winning souls. We need someone, and we need all of us, but people need to win souls. Oh, no, no, we don't believe in evangelism. Well, how's the kingdom going to grow? Oh, we don't believe in prophets, and how are you going to know what God's saying? Unless someone's speaking the word prophetically. Oh, we don't need apostles because the apostles give big vision. They give kingdom vision how to take cities. Now, we don't want that. We want to know how to have a little tiny little group. You know, the same eight of us for 40 years. Just that's all we want. That's all I want. Well, I'll tell you what, I want something more than that. I want some city shaking, nation shaking anointing. That's apostolic vision. Hallelujah. Oh, teachers, we don't need teachers. We'll, we'll find the truth. No, we need actually people to teach us. The Holy Spirit himself will teach us, but people will have an anointing to confirm the word. And as you teach it, you, you, in your heart, say, yeah, that's the truth. I get witness to that. You need teachers. So what I'm saying is this. Honour all the gifts. Honour all the anointings. And then grow in your own personal anointing. Saying, Lord, the desire in my heart to heal the sick. More, 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 Lord. And then you might find with that there's a desire to, to prophesy. Lord, more, Lord, more. Hang around with prophetic people instead of the prophetic people. Hang around the people who've got healing gifts. Hang around people who have the evangelistic anointing and love winning souls. Catch some of what they've got. How do you do it? Number one, again, honour the gifting. Number two, once you recognise it, you can receive it. You can have it. If you receive a prophet, you get their reward. Now here's the problem if you don't receive it. You don't have the benefit and you don't get the reward. You don't get the benefits and you don't get the rewards. You're still loved, but you're poorer for it. So people say to me, how pastor Phil, we don't have to get together with Christians. I'm I'm my own Christian. I'm thinking, what the heck is this? You might be a toe in the body. And you're, you're saying that's all you need for a healthy body is a toe. The toe's looking for the foot. The ear's looking for the eye. The hearer's looking for the seer. The seer's wanting to hang around the one who's sensing. The one who senses wants to hang around the one who's feeling it. This is how the body works. We had that last week with the, about the box of chocolates. Remember those of you here last week, the brother came with that prophetic picture of wasn't it about the chocolates and how we're all different with the flavours and he liked, I don't know, some, what, what was his favourite? Coffee creams or something he was talking about. Yeah. So honour is the key. So tonight, you know, as Dave and Kate and I and other leaders want to minister to you, what we're saying is this, Lord, more of the anointing that we already have Plus, for many of us, a fresh anointing. I've done this the last three or four meetings, or we have, and it's been very powerful. People have experienced, they've sensed, they've felt, and, and you don't have to feel it, but you have to believe it. Say, Lord, I receive a fresh touch from heaven. Last week we did it, and people, not here, but on a Sunday, people's hands were burning under the anointing, and some people fell, up, fell down in the power. You don't have to do any of that. 
but you do have to receive it. Remember how you receive? You just believe it. You begin to open your heart and receive it. Fresh mantles. Fresh touches. Let the gifts on your life grow and develop. Be blessed. Oh, it's supernatural. Hallelujah. Thank you, God. <laughs> Hallelujah. So, Dave and Katie, you have to come with us. Oh. How, about, how about we do what we did before? We just sort of section by section and we just ask the anointing to come and if you feel to lay hands on anybody and other ministry team members, there's a few ministry team members here. Is my breath bad? Oh. It's not, it's, she didn't say yes. Half, halfway through, come. So anybody in this section halfway through say, I, I want a fresh touch, I want more, just stand. You don't have to, but if you want to. Father, give them more, 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 give them more. Give them more, give them more. More prophetic anointing, sir, more anointing, more power, more glory. In Jesus' mighty name. Receive, receive, thank him, thank him. Anybody in this section here who says, yeah, I want a fresh touch, I want more. Oh, Jesus, a couple of the team come. Father, touch them, I pray, Lord. I release a fresh touch from heaven, Lord. Release an anointing from heaven, Lord God. The Lord says, your prophetic anointing is going to grow, it's going to develop, hallelujah. Thank you, God. Jeremy, your healing anointing is coming on you, son. Just thank him for it. In the name of Jesus. The Lord says as an evangelist to speak and to teach and to show people the truth of the Word of God. Fresh anointing, fresh anointing. Anybody in this half here, we just say, Lord, fall upon them afresh. Fresh anointing, Lord God. A fresh anointing, Lord God. A fresh anointing. The Lord puts a mantle on you, which is a spirit of counsel. The Lord says, you're a great listener. You hear the stories of others. You care about where people are at. The Lord says, he anoints you. He anoints you. Spirit of counsel. Ooh, and the Lord says, He'll give you the words to speak to In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Hallelujah. Although this is new, the Lord says there's going to be a, a strong soul with His anointing upon you. You're going to get so comfortable with the things of God. You're finding your way bit by bit, but the Lord's going to use you mightily. You've got many friends who are watching you. Oh, they might show little interest, but the Lord says their hearts are watching. Watching, watching. Touch them, Lord. 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 It's like having a drink. Just soak it up and say, thank you, Jesus. Wear it like a second skin. Oh, anybody in this group here? Father, touch them, touch them, touch them. Fresh anointing. Fresh anointing. Fresh anointing. Fresh healing anointing. Oh, fresh healing anointing. Fresh healing anointing. Touch them, Lord. Anybody in this section here? Father, touch them, Lord God. Touch them, Lord God. More healing anointing coming on you. Touch them, Jesus. Touch them, Lord. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. In the name, even as the Lord has spoken, it's going to happen for you more and more and more and more and more. Hands will be full of power, full of glory. Full of power and full of glory. Even your Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Leadership, 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 leadership. It's your portion. Leadership, leadership, and anointing to lead. Anyone in this section? More Lord. More Lord. Miracles, as he said. Miracles. Oh, Jesus is Lord. More. More of your presence. More of your anointing. More of your anointing. More of your anointing. You. Don't disqualify yourself. Don't look back at the past. It's a new day. It's a new day. It's a new day. Anybody in the section? It's a new day. Oh God, touch these precious ones, Jesus. Touch them, Lord God. Oh God gives increase. 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 Thank you, God. Thank you, God. God gives increase. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Several of you will find gifts of healings will start to manifest. Gifts of healings will start to manifest. Oh, Jesus. Anyone in the section here, the final section, the best of love. Hallelujah. Thank you. Touch them, Jenny. A fresh touch. A fresh touch. A fresh touch from my brother. Oh, God, in the name of Jesus. No condemnation, no shame, no finish. 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 No fin
of James and preaching, preaching gets going to increase and increase and increase and increase and increase. Hallelujah. Jesus, touch them again, Lord God. We just worship. if you came with a prayer need we'd hate for you to leave tonight without it having been prayed for if you're here tonight and you need to reach out to someone I want to encourage you to come out to the front if you came tonight with a need to connect with God to connect with someone I want to invite you to the front. We'll have a prayer ministry team up the front. If you felt tonight that the Lord's been working in your heart and you'd like to stand in faith with someone to come back to the Lord, I want to invite you to come to the front. If your word, if the Lord's been stirring in your heart and you've never given your life to Jesus, I want you to invite you to the front. Just come right now. there's more people here tonight you need to be up the front the Lord's been at work in your heart the Lord's been prompting you stirring within you calling you there's a call being released right now just respond to him respond to him respond to him you know, the Lord might have spoken to you a number of years ago about something that He wanted you to do for Him. 
But whether it was circumstantial or otherwise, he said, no. He said, I can't do it. And it seemed like your life got stuck. Well, tonight the Lord wants to restore you. The Lord wants to restore you. If that's you, I want you to come up the front. Father, we just release a fresh wind of the Holy Spirit. We just release a fresh anointing. We just release your ministry mantle right now. We just release your glory across this place. Come, Lord. Heal the sick. Cast out devils. Raise the dead. Cleanse the lepers. Revive those who are weary. Come, Lord, I just pray that you would, Lord, that you would come and minister to every heart here tonight. Lord, that you would meet every person's need. Yes, Lord. If you're in the ministry team, would you be so kind as to come and love upon these people? For the rest of us, why don't we just worship the Lord a little more? I just sense a real grace right now for soaking the fellowship of His presence.